Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this realistic and fun portrait of a goose using Derwent Inktense pencils, which are water soluble ink pencils that are permanent when dry. I'll be trying out all the different ways you can use them in your artwork, talking about their properties and discussing some of the pros and cons. I'll also be testing out a tip I received from a subscriber last week, so make sure you watch till the end to see how it worked out, and I hope you enjoy the video. All the materials I'm using today will be listed in the description box below this video, along with a reference photo from Pixabay. So let's get started. I'm using Archer's Hot Press Watercolour Paper today and masked around the edges of my pencil sketch with washi tape to get a nice white border. I'm starting off with a white pencil in my set which is actually called Antique White and I'm using it to mark in where the highlights are in my painting. Normally I'd just leave the white of the paper or use something like masking fluid to preserve these lighter areas, but after last week's spiderweb painting I got a tip suggesting that the white intense pencil, once wetted and allowed to dry, can actually act like a resist to preserve the white of the paper, so I'm excited to try that out. So I first drew onto the dry paper with the white pencil and then used a damp brush to activate the ink and left it to dry. Next, I'm using the black pencil to mark in the darkest areas of the goose, so the parts of the eye and the bill. Again, I'm applying the pencil onto dry paper, just like you would a regular colour pencil. These pencils sharpen to a really fine point, which allows you to easily draw in these small details. One thing to bear in mind though, is if you are planning on adding water to these pencils, as well you might be, then the more pigment you lay down when it's dry, the more intense the colour will be when wet. So if you just want a light wash of a colour, then you just need to add a light layer of pencil. But if you want a really dark or intense colour, then you simply need to lay down more pencil. Sounds obvious, but it can take a bit of getting used to, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. Now another feature of these pencils is, again like regular colour pencils, you can layer them. So on the goose's bill for example, I also added some leaf green on the left hand side, which is reflected from the surroundings. I also used a light layer of bright blue on the tip of the bill. And lightly shaded in some indigo to add interest and help make the bill look shiny. Lastly, before adding water, I coloured in the inside of the nostrils with a bit of dark red. This colour is called Shiraz. Okay, so now it's time to activate these pencils by adding water, and for this I'm using my Princeton Snap Brush in a size 2. I dipped it into clean water and blot off any excess water onto a paper towel, so my brush is damp but not dripping wet. Now one thing I love about using these pencils is seeing just how vibrant they are when you add water. The pigment almost melts as soon as you touch it with your wet brush and unlike some watercolour pencils I've seen, there is no streakiness or unactivated pigment left over on your paper, so they are really nice to use and really good quality. It's a good idea to start off by wetting up the lightest colours first before the dark ones to keep your colours from going muddy and rinse off your brush between colours too to keep things clean and fresh. They are much like watercolour pencils in that respect if you've ever used those before, but the difference with the Inktense pencils is that they are permanent when dry. So I started off with the eyes and then rinsed off my brush before adding water to the light layer of leaf green pencil I'd laid down on the bill. Now one downside to these Inktense pencils is that I find the colours can look quite different when wet compared to how they look when dry. So as well as trying to judge the amount of pencil to lay down which I mentioned earlier, you also have to bear in mind how different they might look once activated with water. And this is especially true if you layered several different colours over the top of one another. So it's a good idea to perhaps make a swatch sheet and have a play around with them before you start so there are no nasty surprises on your artwork. 
That said, it's always fun to see your painting come to life at this stage, with the added benefit that once dry, the ink is permanent, and you can easily add more layers over the top if you need to, without worrying about disturbing any of your previous layers. It's not so good if you make a mistake though, and to get a nice smooth transition between colours, you do need to work fairly quickly before the paper dries. But on a small scale like this goose painting, that wasn't too much of a problem. I'm going to colour in the eye on the left hand side next and for this I'm using a willow colour and applying the pencil to dry paper again. I'm really interested to see if the white pencil I've laid down earlier does actually resist any colour bleeding into it when I add water. So let's take a look. I was confident that the black pencil which had dried wouldn't reactivate and bleed into the brown of the iris but I didn't feel like there was much of a resist effect from the white ink tense pencil when I wet the brown pencil. That said though, I was able to easily lift any pigment from over the top of the white highlight areas, which was good, but this is such a small area, so I'm going to try it out on a separate sheet of paper in the hope that it might show up better. So here I'm just going to draw out a white line activate it with water and leave it to dry and I'll come back to that later. Ok let's get back to the goose and another way you can use these ink tense pencils which is to use them more like watercolour. So now rather than apply the pencil directly to my painting I apply it onto a separate sheet of paper and I'm going to use it a bit like a paint palette. I then activate the pencils with water and apply the inky mixture to my paper using a brush. You can even use techniques you've used with watercolours, so on this side of the face I wanted a softer, more subtle application of colour, so I used the wet in wet technique, pre-wetting my paper first before adding in the pigment. And I really enjoy the versatility that these pencils offer, but as I mentioned before, once activated with water the ink does dry quite quickly which means you need to keep applying more pencil down onto the makeshift palette and mixing in water again, which is a bit frustrating. Ok for a small painting like this, but it would probably not be practical for a larger piece. I tried to use a mixture of different colours on the goose's head to tie in with those I'd used on the bill and help it look more cohesive. So I added light brown tones to the cheek on the right side and mixed in some of the leaf green. And above the bill and for the white neck feathers, I added indigo and violet. Using the pencils in this way enabled me to get a lot of precision and control, and I was also able to, whilst the paper was still wet, drop in a mixture of other colours too. I also used the same method to apply colour to the top of the goose's head, as it allowed me to get in the tiny feather details here just by using my paintbrush and applying the activated pigment onto dry paper. The colour of this pencil was called Bark. Now before I go on to mention another quicker and possibly more efficient way to use these pencils, I just want to see if I can get the white ink trick to work. So now it's dry, I'm adding over some more pencil and adding water. And the effect is definitely more visible than it was on the eye. It's not as dramatic as I'd hoped for, but I think I'll have to keep trying. Right, so the next method you can try with these pencils is to apply a damp paintbrush directly to the tip of the pencil. This is really easy and I used it to paint the neck feathers of my goose. The pencils are quite pigmented, but for a more dramatic effect and more colour lay down at once, you could always also apply colour from the wet pencil nib instead. Or alternatively, try drawing on wet paper, but test it out first.
When this first layer had dried, I went in and applied another layer over the top using a colour called Baked Earth to add in some darker feathers. This time though, I applied the pencil directly onto the dry paper. And you can keep on adding as many layers as you want until you're happy with the colour and the result. Here I'm using the bark colour again to colour in the darkest shadow area on the right side of the goose's neck. Now I'm using my paintbrush to activate that pigment. And I'm working from the lighter areas on the left hand side into the darker areas and cleaning off my paintbrush between each application to make sure I don't transfer colour where I don't want it. And notice how different the colours are when wet. For the duck's back, it was back to the tip to tip method though, where I used the tip of my paintbrush damp onto the tip of the pencil. Now this is all well and good if you have the colours that you want, but something else you might need to do is to mix up a colour you don't have, especially if you don't have a full range of colours. I've had this 24 set for quite some time now, and whilst I had most of the colours I needed for this painting, I did miss having colours like sepia and burnt sienna for example, so in this case there are a few things you can do. The first is to experiment with mixing a few colours together on a separate sheet of paper, and this is what I did to add more colour and depth to the feathers on the goose's neck. I mixed up willow, shiraz and bark together. And this gave me a really rich, deep and dark colour which was exactly what I wanted for the right side of the goose's neck. However, if you can't mix or you're struggling to mix the colour you're after, there is another thing that you can do, and that is to use another medium, like regular colour pencils or watercolours for example. So end up with a mixed media piece, and there really are so many possibilities with these pencils. You can even use them to add a glaze like you would in regular watercolour, to change up the colour of an overall area. And I did this on the back of the goose by adding over some of the leaf green, as I could see this colour reflected from the surroundings in my reference picture. For a few different effects you could also try wetting your paper and adding some splatter effect by shaving off some of the pencil onto the damp paper and letting it bleed out for a looser look. I'd love to hear how you use these pencils if you have them, or if you have any other fun effects you can try with them. Ok, so the last thing to do on my goose painting was to add the background and touch up the highlights. And for the background I decided it will be easier to use regular watercolour. I chose sap green for this from my Schmincke set of half pans and applied it to dry paper. Then just to add a bit more interest to my background, I decided to add a few deliberate blooms. I did this just by dropping in clean water onto my background before the paper had completely dried. So now the paper has dried, I can go in with my white gel pen just to brighten up those highlights in the eye and on the bill, as I didn't feel that the antique white pencil was really quite white enough. But I did really enjoy using these ink tense pencils, and I would love to know what you think of the final piece. If you fancy trying out any of these pencils for yourself, then they are available in pack sizes ranging from 6 to 72, and this 24 set is currently on offer on Amazon for £37.23. But prices and availability will obviously vary where you live. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment, and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you all so much for watching, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!